Hey, every hey everybody, welcome to Muffin Approved Gaming and welcome to Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth. This is my first solo Let's Play on this channel and I couldn't be more excited to play a Cthulhu game. I've loved Lovecraftian mythos for some time now and uh... And what better way to delve deeper into the Lovecraftian mythos than playing a game that expands on it even more? This game tends to adjust the settings, uh, like my brightness, sound, and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Kind of terrifying. Um, this is gonna, I don't know how long this game exactly is going to be, but this is going to be my first solo series. All right, without further ado, let's delve I'm into it. Well, I'm scared too. Private investigator. Arkham? Are we in Gotham? Is this a Cthulhu Lovecraftian my end. I can fully see. Batman crossover? My last case opened in me a new fear, a real fear, a fear of myself, of what I am. And of what I've always been. All that I was is now lost. Hope, purpose, pleasure, all meaningless. A lot of on the ground. I now walk in the shadows between worlds, and it is there I have finally glimpsed upon what lives in the dark corners of the earth. Wow, this asylum is not kept up very well. Why are there prisoners? Fuck prisoners. Why are there patients in the hallways in this asylum like that? This is really crappy. Game tips. Alright, all right, okay. So, six and a half years ago. Now, it's, like, it's got this cool, like, old timey movie feel with this screen. I like it. 1915. Hmm. So the answer is no to my um, Batman Cthulhu crossover because this is a uh, a really long time ago. Robert, this had better be good. What's the beef? Sorry, Jack. We had to call. This fellow will only talk to you. Name's Victor Holt. Don't know any. Victor. He's the leader of this weird cult that moved in here a few months back. Got about 20 followers. They've been causing trouble all over town. Stealing, going through folks' trash. Hanging around outside people's homes at all hours. No one ever presses charges, though. They're a screwy bunch. They've got the locals scared. Yeah, that's, that's so kind tonight, of creepy, yeah. We were just passing, you know, doing the normal rounds when we heard gunshots fired from their property. Gunshots? Hang on there. No one said anything about gunshots. Who have we got out I mean, here? Of course somebody's watching us. Yeah, just me, Nichols, and a few new recruits. Well, that's just great. You said it. Lead the way, Robert. 
I better check out this crazy gang of yours. All right, here we go. Ooh, nice car. Nice old-fashioned vehicle. Standard police vehicle. Oh, it tells me things when I walk them up to walk up to them. Tell me. How you doing, kid? Good, sir. Is it true what they say about you? Depends on what they're saying. That you've cracked cases where there was no evidence. <laughs> you shouldn't believe everything you hear. Uh, right. Always questions. I'm in no mood for answering. Yeah, you said it, but Jack, Officer Nichols will brief you at the top. Be careful. Jack, Officer Nichols okay, will brief so you at the, the top. Okay, so the S button is like Be to careful. talk to people. What's Can I change that? So long? So Wait. This must be wrong. I think I saw him with Officer Armstrong. Just take it easy. We're wide open here. It's okay. I've got you covered. I don't like this. Something's not right. Something's not right. Nothing's right about this. Alright, let's see if I can fix these options. So X is backwards. That's gonna be weird, because I'm gonna be trying to run away from something and I'm gonna end up trying to talk to it. Evening, Jack. Glad you could join the freak show. How's it looking, Henry? I don't like this one bit, Jack. Check the alley on the right. Victor Holt's over there in the shadows. He's waiting for you. Can we trust him? Nope, but we've got you covered. You better take it slowly, though. They're a bit twitchy. Don't try anything and nobody will get hurt. Try to stay calm. You better hurry, Jack. All right, fine. Oh! Oh, okay. That, um... That escalated very quickly. Strange cultist, you're running out of ammo. You took, like, what? Inside. Oh, uh, okay, so person's not in here. Why did none of the police officers follow me follow me in here? Oh shit. I can't open it. Damn. Looks like I'm stuck. I might as well check this place How out. How did it get stuck? I can't open it. The handle's been taken off. Alright, well, this is great. Kill them all! That's simple strange. Looks almost like a flaming eye. I should take a closer look. People are dying, and you are interested in this eye. Priorities. Die, you pathetic bastards! Yes, overwrite. I didn't play really anything. Just wanted to make sure the game. Just wanted to make sure the game ran okay. It's locked. Right, that door is locked. At last, <gasps> it's you. He seemed to recognize me. I don't get it. How are you this calm? His body is covered in tattoos, and they were carved into his flesh with something sharp. The body's still warm, but he's definitely dead. Alright, well, that's a... Uh... An old wardrobe. Poisoning by the looks of it. Hmm. Perfect. What is with all these? He's dead. They're all dead. Why is my vision blurry? Okay, maybe I need to leave this room. 
standing there late. Regain sanity amnesia style. Seems like it. Don't shoot. I'm unarmed. Ah. We've been expecting you, Mr. Wild. Well. Okay. That was... that's nice. Oh. A key. Could come in handy. He's dead. Open the interface. Looks like a bad case of lead poisoning. Uh, do I open the interface? That's my database. Oh, I probably inventory. Hmm. Hmm, interest. The shelves have collapsed and spilled books all over the floor. Mm -hmm. It won't open. It won't open. Mm. Well, I guess there's just that one. This one. Door here. It's locked. He doesn't fit. It's locked. Oh. What about this one? It's unlocked. Did I use the key? Okay, so I used the key there. I don't understand. I'm in all of these photos. All of them. Well, that's some... There must be some kind of mistake. Why would they want me here? It they... must be an old case. Something I've forgotten. From screwball with a grudge, maybe. Think. It's probably Gotta more than think. that, Jack. Just saying. Another key. This should fit the door across the hall. All right. Journal. Oh, wait a minute. It is wrong. I just thought of the wrong, wrong thing. I guess I'm... Evening. I guess I'm becoming a victim of my own success. After closing the last five cases so fast, the papers have been calling me a local hero. But I just... But I just had a run of lucky hunches, that's all. I'm just another cop doing this job. So there's a disturbance at a local residence. It's probably just a bunch of kids hopped up on moonshine. Why call in a detective? Maybe the uniform boys are so are sore at being out in this weather and they want to share the joy with a local hero. It would be the first good natured prank I've had to take since those newspaper reports. I don't know though, something doesn't feel right. It's more than just a regular bad feeling. It's hard to explain, but it's strong. I'm probably just tired. Those dreams don't help. I just, I can't remember when I last got a good night's sleep. Must be a month at least. Right about the time I started my run of lucky hunches. The dreams have been getting worse lately. I'm almost afraid to close my eyes. Bourbon helped at first, but not anymore. The lack of sleep must be affecting my nerves. Well, jitters or not, I'd better get going. Hmm, that's great. Ding. There's a lot of things there that can be connected, but... Nah. Uh, enlightened or doomed, inside Boston's strangest church. Those of our readers who live near its headquarters in an ordinary looking Boston residence will need no introduction in to the fellowship of Yith, or whatever the cult's name is. For those who have not encountered this mysterious semi-religious group before, a few words of explanation are necessary. Since our country's founding upon the basis of religious freedom, its shores have been home to many small religious groups outside the mainstream. No small number 
are headquartered in the states of New England, where the pilgrims themselves sought a new world free of religious persecution. But the question must be asked, at what point does religion become a cult, and its trusting adherents, not to mention its blameless neighbors, become victims? That is the question this journal poses in regard to the Fellowship of Yith. In a month-long investigation, our intrepid reporters have diligently sought out the truth behind the so-called church. Its origins are somewhat mysterious, the more so since the group's leaders declined to be interviewed or to assist our investigation in any way. However, it seems that the fellowship was founded more than 20 years ago by one Victor Holt, based on a revelation he had received from beyond the confines of this world. Holt has not been seen for almost six years. His followers apparently believe that he is communing with mysterious powers behind his faith and that he is shortly to return with new insights and teachings. All this sounds like a harmless, if eccentric, spiritual group, little different from many others. However, those who make their homes near to the Fellowship's headquarters tell a different, more sinister story. The adherents of this obscure sect are to be found loitering on street corners, casting menacing glances at their innocuous neighbors, and frequently engaging in acts of petty crime, which the local police seem powerless to prevent or redress. Strange lights have been observed burning in the windows of the old house at all hours of the day and night. They change color unpredictably and cast weird, unintelligible shadows. Even more disturbing are the noises which have been heard to issue from within the mysterious building. They include chanting, unearthly music, and, worst of all, screams like those of lost souls in agony. Many of the sex neighbors are convinced that its services include human sacrifice or similar atrocities. But those few who dared complain to the police were told that because the house is private property and because there is no concrete evidence of any wrongdoing, the most they can do is file a noise complaint. Are the horrors in Salem being reenacted in our city more than two centuries on? Is this fellowship of Yith engaging in unspeakable and criminal acts of worship involving torture and sacrifice? Why is nothing being done to ease the fear and distress they cause to the local community? A source within the police department, speaking on the condition of an anonymity, tell the Globe that the Fellowship is suspected of involvement in a number of local crimes, but so far the lack of evidence and the reluctance of nervous witnesses to come forward have thwarted any official investigation. Farewell, we say, where the police cannot, or will not, investigate. The Globe shall continue to act in the interest of interests of Boston citizens, fearlessly exposing the truth about the so-called church and its followers. Our findings will be published in these pages over the following months, so that all may know the truth. Editor's note, it is with great sorrow that the Globe announces the death of reporter Howard Adelstone, who was leading the paper's investigation into the Fellowship of Yig when he apparently drowned in Boston Harbor. The coroner has ruled his death a suicide. Our condolences go out to his family. Ooh, that's, that's just creepy. All right. Um, after that, let's save your quick. It's unlocked. For nutcases, they seem quite literate. There are definitely some strange sounds coming from this side of the room. These books are really old, and most of them are in strange languages I don't understand. It appears to be a private study area. What's this? That's what I want. The drawer holds an ancient manuscript. The symbols on the front seem to be written in classical Greek. Alright, let's read this. Uh, Narcotica? P is usually silent. This manuscript looks medieval, but claims to be a translation from classical Greek of a far older work from before the time of the first humans. The pages are stained, faded, and even burned in some places, making reading difficult. The legible sections tell the history of unthinkably distant antiquity. 
They speak of races so strange as to be beyond human comprehension, and wars fought across vast gulfs of time and space. Their concepts so utterly alien that they sound like absolute madness. Time travel, flying polyps, mental projection, the gr great race of Yith. It makes you dizzy just to read it. Ooh. It appears to be a yes, private yes. study area. I got it. Oh, there's the leaning mechanic. No. Oh, did I just? Did I? Oh. <laughs> the jumping mechanic. That's ridiculous. Shit, that did not sound good. It still doesn't sound good, by any means. Oh. It's wedged shut. It figures. Pretty much. Jack! Jack! Where are you? There's no one in here. We should check upstairs. Well, that's just swell. We're dead. <laughs> He's dead. The beam must have fallen and crushed his skull. Yeah, that's a... Dead bodies, and plenty of them. Something dreadful has been going on down here. It sounds like a computer. Uh... Whoa! I'm sorry. Uh, at least he's out of his misery. He doesn't have. Is this always? What is going on? The crystal's still warm. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. Oh, God. This tunnel feels like it's going to collapse at any moment. Now, why are we going further down? Why would we not stay in this room? Where if we could be, if it were to collapse, we could stay here and be safe. But no, game logic says keep going down, keep descending into hell. Well, I mean, ah, it's too hot to pick up. What, what do I do then? Too hot to touch. I think it's being used as a power source for the machine. I have another power source. So what do I do with that? 
think it's being used as a power oh. source for the machine. <laughs> well, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. <laughs> Alright, what's going on here? Hmm, lovely. Well... It's a similar shape to the slot upstairs. It looks like something's been removed from it. There we go. Oh, and power button is over here. Alright. I think that was a figure over there. Oh. Okay. What? Uh. I. I don't. What? It's been more than six years since I entered that strange house in Boston. Oh, that's right. That was a prologue, wasn't it? to me, it was just five months ago. Amnesia, the doctors called it. Probably brought on by acute mental stress. I remember investigating the far side of the library. There was screaming. According to the police report, they had searched the house for hours, only to find me later collapsed on the floor. And that didn't ring any warning bells to anybody else? When my eyes opened and I spoke, my colleagues recoiled in fear. There was something unnatural in my voice and blank gaze. They committed me to Arkham Asylum, where I was diagnosed with severe schizophrenia. As it became clear that I presented no danger to either myself or others, I was released from the asylum's care. I have learned little of my activities in the six years that followed. The accounts I've been able to piece together show much of my time was spent in travel and study. I maintain a fanatical infatuation with the occult, delving deep into volumes concerning witch cults and dark legends, often in languages unfamiliar to my own. When I reawakened five months ago, exactly six years after entering that house in Boston, no trace was left of what had been a secondary personality. I was myself what is again, going on? or at least what I believed myself to be. Return to normal life has been a painful process. In recent days, my dreams have been plagued by cosmic landscapes, and I've become fearful of my own reflection. I am beginning to remember things from that day, more than six years Psst, past, phone's ringing. that I've told no else. Oh, it's one of those, no, oh, like, 1920. Jack Walters. Uh, hello, Mr. Walters. My name's Arthur Anderson. I need your help finding a missing person. I don't take that kind of job. Uh, did you get my package? Um, uh, hold on. What exactly do you want from me, Mr. Anderson? Uh, it's one of my store managers, you see. Brian's his name. Brian Burns. Nice lad. He disappeared recently from the first B -B. national grocery store in Innsmouth. Innsmouth? Okay. I never heard of it. Uh, it's a small fishing town on the coast, not far from Arkham. 
Uh, I'd like to see you in person before you leave. Hold on there a minute. I didn't agree to take this j Ugh, What the hell? I'll be here all day anyway. New client, February 6, 1922. I have a new client, Mr. Arthur Anderson, the regional manager of the First National Grocery Store chain. It appears that the First National Grocery in Innsmouth was recently burglarized, and its manager, one Brian Burnham, is missing. From what I have been able to gather, Burnham is something of a young rogue. A friend of the family, Mr. Anderson gave him the job as a favor. Burnham is looking like the prime suspect for the robbery, but there are a few things that don't add up. Not to Anderson, and not to me. For instance, why would Burnham force an entry into the store when he had a full set of keys, free access to this cash register, and the combination to the back office safe? To misdirect by any of it? Hmm. To misdirect any investigation? If that was his plan, why did he disappear? Following my conversation with Mr. Anderson, I found out what I could about the ancient town of Innsmouth. For generations, the crumbling seaport and its people have been shunned by neighboring communities. Outsiders are unwelcome there, and there are superstitious tales of a strange element in the town's oldest families. They are of mixed blood, so the stories go, whatever that's supposed to mean. The usual Hicktown prejudice, no doubt. After making a brief visit to Innsmouth, my client came away distrustful of the local authorities. He isn't buying their line that Burnham robbed the place and wants to know what happened to him. Only one bus goes to Innsmouth, and tomorrow afternoon I'll be on it. It feels good to have a purpose after five months break, trying to break through my amnesia. I also feel a little apprehensive. Maybe it's the wild stories about the town, or maybe it's just because I haven't had a case in so long. Hmm. This is getting interesting now, everyone. Getting real interesting. Innsmouth, February 7th. And Driver, how far did the stop? It's almost there. I'll drop you at the town square of Innsmouth. Why lock the gates? Capes out wanderers looking for work. We don't want those folks like that interfering with our affairs. Is the bus from Arkham always this empty? Aye, and we prefer it that way. Not many come to Innsmouth. But what about trade? Surely the port needs business. Innsmouth has the means to look after her own. This bus is making some really impressive turns. <laughs> Maybe it's just the way that it's, we're looking at it here. I don't know. This is it, stranger. End of the line. And I think that'll be the end of the line here as well. Um, actually, you know, let's see if we can find a save point instead of having to go through all that again. Could you direct me to the first national grocery store? I hear they have a shop in town. I don't know nothing about that. Oh, well. You see, I'm looking for a young lad called Brian Burnham. I'm a friend of the family. He worked in the store. Don't know who you're talking about, fella. Well, all right then. Chit chatting to him's gonna get me no place fast. <laughs> Pretty much. All right, so I think I'm gonna call it here. Oh, it's a really good game so far. Lots of. 
lots of real interesting stuff going on, and I can't wait to get to the part where I'm actually going to start running for my life. Uh, but, yeah, um, I think I'm going to like this series, and I hope you all do too. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Put a Type something in the comments section if you would like as well. Uh, if you want to see future series or even see other videos such as Spore, Five Nights at Freddy's, Undertale, Skyrim, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That'd be awesome. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you uh, next time. See you around.